Hi there, this is Pride Weekly. We'll start with Monday, all transgender stories today. Germany's bringing in self-ID for anyone who's trans, intersex or non-binary. Politicians have voted to make it easier to alter name and gender details in official records. In future, people will just tell registry offices about the changes they want made with three months' notice. The Self-Determination Act's been passed in the country's parliament, the Bundestag. 374 lawmakers were in favour, with 251 against. Jamie Williams from Cologne in Germany came out as trans five years ago when he was 15. He tells DW self-ID will make life much easier for trans people. At the moment, you need two independent medical experts and a court order. You have to pay money for this if you don't get legal aid. It's simply a very, very long process. For me, self-determination means that I know best who I am and can determine that myself. The law is likely to come into effect in the next few months. It'll make Germany the 12th country in Europe to have self-ID. Plans have been submitted for a national transgender monument in Manchester in the UK. Passing on light would be made up of four reflective metal columns on stone bases. It symbolised the strength and spirit of trans and gender diverse people. And we'll end today's transgender triple by showering some intellectually bereft bigots with our pity. Specifically, the knuckle-draggers behind SheWon.org, the sightless cisgender female athletes and the events it's claimed they would have won in if they hadn't been beaten by a trans woman. Not saying the clutch in its straws, but the competitions featured include poker, video games and under-14s Irish dancing, plus a hot dog eating contest that was, in any case, won by a biological female. It's a mystery how these troglodytes are able to walk and talk, never mind set up a website. It's Pride Daily for Tuesday. Let's see where they're trying to criminalise being queer this week. It's Congo. A bill's been introduced to Parliament in the Central African country targeting persons of the same sex who engage in sexual intercourse or sexual activity, even in a private circle. What I do with my private circle is none of your business, Congo. There'd be a prison sentence of up to 10 years. It's basically a nightmare to be LGBTQ plus in Africa, with anti-queer legislation across the continent. And as for having rights, well, not so much. This bisexual doctor in Madagascar tells France 24 he keeps his sexuality hidden from his patients. I'm sure that people wouldn't be happy to know that their doctor is like that. Some people could take an extreme position and say, I would never send my children to see him, and certainly not my little boys. It would be that bad. A transgender man and his conjoined twin sister have died in the US. George and Laurie Chappelle from Pennsylvania were 62 years old and hadn't been expected to live beyond 30. The skulls were fused together and they shared part of their brain and vital blood vessels. They became the first same-sex conjoined twins to identify as different genders when George came out as trans in 2007. And the Australian Christian lobby aren't very happy, just in general, and specifically because of Balls Out Bingo. They want next month's event in Brisbane, which is hosted by a drag queen, cancelled because the publicity says there'll be a sexy ball boy. The organisation's decided that refers to a child and represents diabolical exploitation for adult sexual entertainment. And that's what we refer to as clutching at straws. It's Pride Daily for Wednesday. A human rights advocate's been protesting in Ghana against plans for a harsh anti-LGBTQ plus law there. Could get three years in prison just for being queer and five years for setting up or funding LGBTQ plus groups. Texas Kadir Morrow was demonstrating on the streets of the Ghanaian capital Accra. He pointed out the Bibles used to justify anti-queer discrimination but people seem to sidestep the good book's views on other things like infidelity. The man that commits adultery with another man's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. 
tomorrow, if an individual in Ghana wishes to criminalize the acts of side chick and side boo, would the clergy and the entire nation support it like we are for LGBTQ plus bill? Gay sex is already illegal in Ghana with a three-year jail term. There's a reenactment today on the 59th anniversary of the first gay rights demo in America. The original protest in front of the White House back in 1965 in Washington, D.C., highlighted government discrimination against queer people. Today's event's organised by the Rainbow History Project to bring attention to how much progress has been over the last nearly six decades. And let's finish up today with some queer chihuahuas. So, there's an Australian kids' cartoon you might have heard of called Bluey, about a puppy who goes on adventures. Do you all remember adventures? They seem to stop after a certain age, and we go to garden centres instead. Anyway, in the season finale, it's revealed one of the characters, a chihuahua called Pretzel, has got two mums. This is only mentioned in passing, not made a big deal of, and it's being praised for handling the subject so matter-of-factly. It's Pride Daily for Thursday. A campaign to restore the original bus from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, has raised around 170,000 Australian dollars. The film turns 30 this year. It's about drag performers travelling across the Aussie desert. No one actually knew where the bus was till it was found in New South Wales in 2019. The campaign's trying to raise $2.2 million all in. That's to restore the Japanese Hino bus from 1976, which is in a bad way, and create a museum display. Guy Pearce is one of the stars of Priscilla. He tells GQ about catching people off guard in the rural areas the cast filmed in. Certain townsfolk were prepped that a film was coming, but they didn't really know what it was. And the locals were told, OK, our main characters are going to sort of come walking down the street and you guys are going to watch. And you'd see these people just seeing these drag queens for the first time, country towns that had not seen anything like this before. And this is in 93 as well, you've got to remember. So there's some pretty great, honest reactions. <laughs> the South Australian government's contributed $100,000 to the fund, could see the bus restored and on display in 2026. Iraq's postponed a vote in Parliament on whether gay sex should be punishable by death. A proposed law would also see the threat of life in prison for same-sex relations, plus seven years inside for the promotion of homosexuality. The vote's been postponed because of time constraints and disagreements about proposed amendments. And if we had a the world's gone mad section, this would surely be in it. Transgender people are being banned from entering a poetry competition. It's run by the government of the Tver region in Western Russia. They reckon it's an attempt to protect traditional values. Russia's very anti-queer, not on my holiday bucket list, with the non-existent international LGBT movement officially labelled as extremist. It's Pride Daily for Friday. Voting in India's general election starts today, and for the first time, more LGBTQ plus rights are being promised by some of the main political parties. Both the Congress Party and the Communist Party say they'll legalise same-sex marriage. Promises are also being made regarding trans rights, queer discrimination and hate crimes. It's only five and a half years since homosexuality was decriminalised in India, these marchers at Delhi Pride tell AFP legalising gay marriage would lead to more progress. Decriminalisation has only targeted one aspect of it, but there's a larger aspect where the rights are still not there with the LGBTQ community. Inheriting properties together, opening bank accounts, marriage is one big thing because once the marriage comes into play, all these other aspects of the rights will actually be met. Nearly a billion people are voting over the next six weeks. It's going to be easier for people in Sweden to change their legal gender. A law has been passed to lower the minimum age from 18 to 16 as of July next year, and the whole process will be simplified for people of all ages. Meanwhile, Scotland's health service is following England's in suspending access to puberty blockers comes off the back of a review into gender identity services. 
And Time magazine's put out its yearly 100 Most Influential People list. And of course, there's some queer representation. It includes Coleman Domingo, who recently became only the second out gay man to be nominated for an Oscar, and trans actor Elliot Page from the film Juno. In a glaring omission, I haven't made the cut, which of course devalues the whole thing. I'm Kev McGrath. See you Monday.